if the more this club stays on this plane, the more you can control the flight of the ball. You kind of can hit the ball at your target. If the club starts getting off plane, it starts coming outside or if it's coming underneath, players complain of too much movement of the ball. So one of the most important things to do is try and keep this club on plane. Now, how do you get the club on plane? I always say there's three real primary mechanisms to get the club on plane. The first thing you can do is you can use your wrists. Okay, so the wrist can change the plane of this golf club dramatically, right? So we're going to check wrist range of motion because that's a great planing mechanism. The second thing you can use to get the club on plane is your shoulders, right? So without using the wrist, I can use my shoulders. This is why when we were checking 90-90, this is really important. This is a great planing mechanism. Now there's a third way to get the club on plane, and it's posture, right? I can use posture. How many times do you see people that do this with their upper body because they don't use their shoulder or the wrist, and then as they come in, they use their body to try and get the club on plane. Right? We see it all the time. Well, for the 90-90 test, we're looking to see how much of this shoulder range of motion you have because on your trail side, if you don't have it, well, then a lot of times we're going to see loss of posture, early extension, maybe some weird things with the hands trying to get the club on plane. And just remember, if you see somebody doing this and you say, hey, I heard you're not supposed to early extend, and you get rid of the early extension, well, if you didn't give them a new way to plane it, now all of a sudden they're steep, which could be even worse, right? So you always don't take away one planing mechanism if you don't give them a new one. Now, how about the left side? Same thing, we always check both sides because if this side's tight, right? If I look at most players, when they come through, the hands release like this, right? The, if this is my glove hand, the glove hand will go underneath the non-glove hand. On most players, the hands are pronating and supinating as they come through. But if you can't externally rotate, it's hard to do this. It's hard to get all the supination from your forearm. You're getting some from the forearm, some from the shoulder. So a lot of times, if they can't do this, what you'll start to see is this. We talked about that in the Big 12, chicken winging, scooping. That could be a shoulder problem. Hence why we check 90-90 on the lead and the trail side.